going to be another seed haul. This one is going to be a couple of different places, but mostly am I gardener. I just have some random gourds, gourds that I want to grow that I'm going to show you the seeds of those. I actually ordered these a while ago. When the cold weather moves in, I start looking at the catalogs that um, I'm sent in the mail. I start dreaming of next year and I buy all the seeds. <laughs> I had these organized, but now I think I've unorganized them. Darn it. Well, most of my other hauls have been a lot of tomatoes. This one barely has any tomatoes. There's probably a couple in here, but it doesn't really have a whole lot. I've actually already traded with some of these, so some of the packs are open. I really want to get these organized in my, um, my seed organization. That way when I go to pick things out that they're all kind of together and not scattered because I've got an Am I Gardener haul, I've got a Baker Creek haul that I'm going to do next. It's like haul day. I'm just going to do all the hauls. I've also, I don't know if I'm going to do that today because I think I need to go to my P.O. box and check. I'm going to do the December trade traded seeds haul as well here coming up soon, which it's the big, it's, it's the biggest one yet. Let's just get started. I I love Am I Gardener. Am I Gardener is each packet of seeds is only two dollars. He's got a great selection. It comes with uh, quite a lot of seeds. I like the packaging because the picture of what you're getting is on the packaging. Even it's even in color most of the time. Their um, customer service is great. One time I was missing, like I, I ordered a garden marker and I didn't get it, and they sent it out like immediately. It's, it's just, I love Luke's videos. His videos are very informational. Eh, informational. His videos are very informational and he's got a really upbeat personality and I always love that about him. He just makes gardening seem so doable and so fun. And so I support his, his store, his seed store. Every year I will buy seeds from his store. Now I have started to save seeds from things but he's always adding new varieties and I just, you know, it's, it's, it's fun. It's, it's something that I enjoy doing and I'll just keep on doing it. <laughs> I'm a collector of the seeds. All right. So the first big bunch I got, these are all Swiss chards. I, my, I found out this year that my pet rabbit, Ellie, she actually, she's an indoor rabbit. She is going to be turning 10 in February. She is old. She's a geriatric lop-eared bunny. She got sick a couple of times this year. One pretty badly. So when rabbits get sick, it's actually kind of hard to tell because they hide it uh, because they're such a, a prey animal. But usually I catch it pretty quickly. I know my rabbit and I can see when things are off. So I caught it quickly and so we were able to save her life. But during that time, if a rabbit doesn't feel well, they'll stop eating. And if they stop eating for a certain period of time and it's not very long, they will die. They're, they shut down, it just shuts down all of their organs. So a rabbit has to have constant food going in. And I found out this year that she loves Swiss chard. So, of course, I went in, in my gardener and I bought all the Swiss chards. So I got magenta. This picture is a little bit blurry on this one. I got orange. So I'm going to be growing all the Swiss chards for Ellie. This one is Lucalus. Lucalus. Here we go. That's easy. This one's fun. Rhubarb. I'm actually going to try to grow rhubarb for the first time this year. So I wonder if rabbits can eat rhubarb. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. But I'd like to like make rhubarb pie for the first time. My mom used to. We. I wanted to grow rhubarb because growing up where I lived, my mom had a rhubarb plant. And it just came back every year. I remember it was up near, she had a plum tree. So I planted a plum tree last year, again, because it just brings back memories of home and my mom. I wanna try to make some rhubarb pie. 
um, and something else, rhubarb. I don't know. Rhubarb preserves? We'll see. But I got some rhubarb from, was it Forgotten Heirlooms? I think it was Forgotten Heirlooms. I'm not positive, but I think I got the rhubarb from there. But uh, onto the Swiss chard again. Ruby red. I keep telling all my stories. Yellow. Pink. <laughs> I'm telling, I mean, I got all the Swiss chards that there were. If there's any more Swiss chards, I'll go back and get those too. Ford hook. Ford hook giant. Ford, yeah, Ford hook giant. So I also bought this year lots of grow bags. Um, I have some out by the greenhouse now with some things in it, but I'm going to put them down at the bottom of the hill of my garden and line the fence with just a ton of grow bags and try to grow these kinds of things like Swiss chard, kale. I'm also thinking I'm going to add peppers to the grow bags. I don't do very well with growing pumpkins, but I just keep on trying. And I thought this um, pumpkin was really pretty, so I got seeds for uh, Long Island cheese pumpkin. It's really pretty. And I saved seeds from, I'll put a picture up, there were two pumpkins that there's this place I like to go to to buy teas and the pump, my pumpkins and mums, and it's in Bedford, Pennsylvania. It's called Mile Level Farm, Mile Level Market or Mile Level Farm Market. I'll look it up. But they always have such a great selection of pumpkins. And so I got a few different kinds of pumpkins and in the intention that once I was done using them for decoration, I was going to save the seeds from them. So I'm going to try to grow those too. I also got black futsu pumpkin. It's a very interesting kind of a, some might say ugly, but I think it's beautiful. Like a warty looking, but the color of it's really pretty. It's like a tan, tanny pink. And then I got Burgess buttercup squash. And let me see, I think this might be the only, is this the only pepper? Oh, no, I got it. So I've had these seeds before. All right, so I've had these seeds before, but um, I ran out of them, so I've got some more. I've never saved seeds from them. I don't know why, but maybe this year I will. Sweet dumpling squash. Kind of a smaller type squash. It gets to be, it's small, flat, ribbed, about one pound. White skin with green stripes. And then I got Delice de la Table, or Delice, Delice de la Table melon. So I'm not good at growing melons either. That's another thing I just keep struggling with, but I'm going to keep trying. Uh, I just try to change where I put them, how I grow them. We'll see what I do this year. And hopefully maybe I'll get something. Uh, I got a couple of cabbages, so we had a, that big storm, that winter storm Elliot rolled through here, and before we got the wind and the cold, we got snow. So everything, the cabbages, the turnips and stuff, I mean, we got down to, with the wind chill, it was like negative 21 degrees at one night. I don't know what things, because it's just starting to thaw today. Today's like the first warm day where you're just not like miserable outside. My cabbages and everything were buried under a big layer of snow. So I'm hoping maybe that the snow insulated them enough that maybe they survived. I don't know. We'll see. With it, at the end of the day today, they'll probably be um, uncovered. So I can kind of see if there's anything. But I got some more cabbages. I'm going to try to start these probably in the next few weeks. Uh, maybe not. Maybe the very beginning of February because it doesn't take them long to germinate and then grow and then for me to be able to put them in the ground, the ground has to be workable and it's frozen solid right now. I'm going to try again to grow them in the spring. This one is the Danish ball head cabbage and then this one is early Jersey Wakefield cabbage. So I got a couple of cabbages. I got one kind of mint, lemon mint. That's really pretty. I got a few kinds of basil. I don't know if any of you watch Roots and Refuge, their, her channel. Jess uh, showed a video about how to make uh, 
basil tea and I, I didn't actually make it this year because I didn't really plant a whole lot of basils but this year I want to plant again in grow pots a bunch of different basils and try to make basil tea because apparently it's super yummy because if you read the comments to that video so many people tried it for the first time and were like wild about it so I'm curious and again my rabbit likes to eat basil all kinds of basil so I got cinnamon basil and I also traded for a couple of different types of basils as well Thai basil so I should be good with basils and I got licorice basil all right and then I like to save um seeds for this lettuces so I usually will, you know, cut and come again. And when it gets really hot in the summer, they go to seed. I will just let them do that. And then I save the seeds from my lettuces. But, you know, it's fun to try new varieties. So I got this one because it's supposed to not go to seed as quickly as other ones. Slow Bolt. That's the name of it. Slow Bolt. So that's what it is. When uh, lettuce goes to seed, it shoots up a center stalk. It, it and that stalk will be the flowers and then after the flowers come the seeds and those little pods and after um your lettuce goes to seed it doesn't taste so good which is you know it's interesting how plants work it doesn't taste so good because it's trying to go to seed it's trying to reproduce basically and the reason why it changes its flavor is because it doesn't want stuff to eat it because if it gets eaten, then it won't be able to go to seed and reproduce. It's, it's kind of wild, but it's really cool. Another term for going to seed is called bolting. So this is a slow bolt, slow bolt. That's the name, which I think is neat. I got Great Lakes crisp head lettuce. Now this one, I've never tried to actually grow heads of lettuce with any of my lettuces. I just grow like a whole bunch of them and just do cut and come again. But this one, I was going to try to actually see if I could, you know, separate out the seedlings and grow actual heads of lettuce. There's this person that I follow on Facebook and who is also a member of Tomato Obsession. I won't say his name, but he has a greenhouse and he's been sharing pictures of his greenhouses and he just has these, oh, majestic looking garden beds inside his greenhouses or his polytunnels, high tunnels. I'm not sure exactly, but it they're just Oh, I, I can only dream to grow lettuce like that. And he grows like heads of lettuce of the, all the different kinds of lettuces. I mean, there are so many, and it just, every time he puts up pictures, I just sit there and stare at them for like ever. <laughs> I'm just like, man, I wish I could grow lettuce like that. So I'm gonna actually try to grow some heads of lettuce. I also got super red romaine, really pretty. And cinnamon lettuce. This is the first time I've ever grown this, but it's also very pretty, a dark colored lettuce what's this one say it's very vibrant it's the most vibrant lettuce they've ever grown ruby red rust and purple leaves i might actually i don't know try to grow lettuces like in my front yard as well this year just i know that i'm gonna have not enough space for all the tomatoes i want to grow and when i run out of space in my garden i'm definitely going to start dotting them all over my property i'm just there's just gonna be tomatoes everywhere <laughs> because i need to grow all of them i've traded for so so many varieties it's gonna be hard i'm gonna actually do a video on how i decide i think i've got like a thousand different kinds of tomato seeds now tomato seed varieties and i'm I've got i'm gonna have to narrow it down to 200 so i think i'm actually gonna do a video on how i go about doing that in case any of you <laughs> that are watching that are also um members of tomato obsession you probably have way too many tomato seeds and then you know what to do with and how to pick so maybe that video won't be helpful i don't know we'll see but i also got arminian yard long cucumber i thought i'd had this one but i'm gonna try to grow this one and silver slicer i've traded twice now for the silver slicer seeds and I've heard that it's easy. That's another thing I have trouble with. I don't have trouble growing tomatoes, obviously. But cucumbers, melons, uh, pumpkins. I don't know why. I just have this. It's just it, I'm not good at it yet. Yet. 
going to keep trying. There's going to, there's where there's a will, there's a way. And I have the will to grow that, that stuff. And I'm going to, it's going to happen for me. It will. Yeah. I'm putting that out there into the universe. Maybe this will be the year I get it back. <laughs> but Armenian Yard Long and then Silver Slicer is what I'm going to grow. And then I only got one pepper because I ran out of these seeds. Chocolate Beauty. Okay. I only got a few tomatoes, so I'll show you those. I pretty much have all of the varieties of tomatoes that he sells. <laughs> I got green grape. Japanese black trifel. Or is it tri? Yeah, trifel. And then I already had these seeds, but I ran out, so I wanted to get some new ones. I thought I had ran out, and I wasn't sure if I had saved seeds from them, but I did end up finding a big old packet of saved seeds, but oh well. Great white. I'll always take more. And then, I, you know, I can trade those. So, my big plan for this year is to bring in the pollinators. Because one of the reasons I think that I don't do very well with, you know, uh, certain squash, melons, uh, pumpkins, things like that. I don't have a lot of bees. I don't have a lot of pollinators. And I want to bring them in. So I am going to fill my, I might even put stuff in the walkways, but I just want flowers everywhere. And I've been saving my Tampico jugs. I'll show you what the, I mean by Tampico. They're my favorite kind of jugs to do cold starting in. So I've got, and I've traded for a ton of, ton of uh, flower seeds, but I invested in different kinds of flowers. I've looked into a lot of the things that will attract pollinators. So I'm hoping that this year is, you know, a good year for me because I'm just planning on filling, filling the place with flowers as well. I tried, tried growing nasturtiums for the first time last year and I had this one nasturtium that was massive and it was gorgeous and I hope it reseeded itself. But let's get into the haul here. I got some okay I got one zinnia I love zinnias and I have a bunch of different varieties but I'll always take more I got is it is it is a Bellina is a Bellina and then I got a couple of straw flowers I got copper red I'd like to learn how to make flower arrangements uh, have no clue but I'd like to if I ever have a big enough property where I can have like a specific vegetable growing area and then also another area to grow like a garden for cutting like your cut flowers I think that would be so awesome I don't have the property for it now because I want to fill everything with tomatoes and who knows even if I had a bigger property I'd probably still run out of room because I'm like I'm gonna just grow all the tomatoes that I think that would be cool if I would learn how to do flower arrangements but that's just a pipe dream for now I also got purple red straw flower I got a couple of asters I don't know that I have any aster seeds this one is violet and rose and then I got one poppy I got I think I actually got this twice I might have got this from MI Gardener and then I think I might have got it from Baker Creek which is fine because I traded some of these black swan I got snapdragons I think snapdragons are so pretty they I like I like hollyhocks and I like snapdragons a lot because of the, the tall stalk that they have with all the flowers. And I grew snapdragons for a few years now, but I haven't ventured into different varieties. So I wanted to get a, a some more variety of those because they're so easy to grow. They're so easy to propagate too. Last year was the first year I grew hollyhocks. So again, this year, and I loved it. Like I had these gorgeous looking hollyhocks. So this year I went and I ventured into more varieties of hollyhocks because I fell in love with those. This is Orange Wonder, Snapdragon, Vintage White, and Apple Blossom. 
So that's everything for the MI Gardener haul. And then I wanted to show you these seeds. So I am going to be putting up a video at some point. I was going to do it over the holidays and get that one all done, but I had a little bit of a kink during my holidays. But I grew birdhouse gourds a couple years back and they've been sitting in my basement waiting for me to do something with them. And I finally started the process of making some birdhouses with them. And I actually made some for some family members. And then I also am going to be making like these really cool like lighting thing and then just garden decor, but gourds are fun. I grew the apple gourd. The apple gourd is still on the vine down in my garden, aging. Um, it'll dry out on the vine and then come spring, I'll bring them inside to continue to dry out and then I'll save the seeds from those. So I saved a ton of seeds from the birdhouse gourds, but I've fallen in love with gourds. So I ordered from this, where is this? This is his name. It's called Seed Man. So Seed Man, excuse me, Seedman.com. And he just has all kinds of gourd varieties. So I ordered a bunch of different gourds that I want to grow this year. This one should be interesting. I don't know how well it'll do in my garden, but it's a hundred pound bushel gourd. So it's a, a big mm, gourd. Yeah, it's a big gourd. And um, I'll put pictures of, of what these look like. Like you can make gourds into like a lot of different things. Decor, you can make bowls. Like I'm doing with the apple gourds and the uh, birdhouse gourds, make birdhouses or bird feeders, some utensils with some of the gourds. Like there's one called, I think it's called like a spoon gourd. And then, you know, when you cut it in half, it resembles the shape of a spoon. This one is African dream or African drum, African drum gourd. So I'm really like, and it doesn't come with a lot of seeds. Like this one only comes with one, two, three, four, five seeds. I think a lot of them only come with five seeds. Yeah, this one has five seeds. So I'm hoping I'm successful. This one has a, a bunch more seeds, but this is another one that only has five seeds. This one is the bull, B-U-L-E, bull gourd. And then this one is, oh, I don't even remember what this one is. Cause I got these a while back. Marina D. G O G. I shouldn't. I should not bother. <laughs> but I'm not sure if this is a gourd. The seeds look different than gourd seeds normally do. But maybe it is. Maybe it's still gourd. Some of these seeds look like they're not so great. Which uh, come on now. I don't know if they got damaged in packaging. Like, see that one there? It's already broken, so that one's probably not viable. Now, these ones have a bunch of seeds. This one's called Bowl, Tobacco Box, Canteen, or Basket Gourd Seed. Oh, it's a mix. Oh, I didn't know I bought that. It's got Bowl, Tobacco Box, Canteen, Basket Gourd. Now, I have tried to grow... Was it canteen and basket or was it just canteen? I tried to grow a couple of gourds last year and where I put them, they looked like they started to take off. It was canteen and then bushel, I believe. But something kept digging up the seedlings. So this year I'm actually going to create some sort of like little enclosures until they really get going. And I think it was a chipmunk or I don't know if it was a bird, but like I'd go down and check every day and they'd be pulled up out of the ground and I'd stuff them back in. They do okay. And then a few days later, I come down, something dug it back. I was just like, oh. So there was a few that I was able to get germ germinated and get into the garden, but some little critters just were like, mm, no thanks and kept digging them up. So I'm gonna, I've got uh, extra, I've got lots of extra hardwire cloth now, <laughs> but I'm gonna make like little cages to go around my seedlings so that stuff will leave them be. Oh, I got, why did I get two of those? Huh. I actually bought two packs of those, the, the mixture ones. Don't know why I did that. That might've been a mistake. Now I have extra. 
I'm hoping that I can save seeds from these gourds and then I won't ever have to buy them again. Oh, and it also came with, in the packaging, the little little markers that you could use, which I thought was nice to label your plants. Put those back in the baggie. But you only need one seed to grow one gourd plant, and then that gourd plant can grow you several different gourds, and in one gourd, we'll have hundreds of seeds. It's awesome. So that is my seed haul for today. That's in my gardener and seed man. I just I just threw that one in there. Lots of fun new stuff to try. I'm excited about. Swiss chard from my bunny rabbit. She is old and she gets spoiled. So what my bunny likes, my bunny's gonna get. So she's gonna be spoiled this summer. So if you like seed hauls, please give this video a thumbs up. If you know somebody that would like to watch it, please share my videos and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.